Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we'll be building a really useful system to help manage cooldowns regardless of the type of game that you're making. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. But first I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. There's also a link to their Discord server if you'd like to be part of the Admix community. So the setup you need to be able to follow along, okay, we just have a simple scene with a player game object. Now this is the Mixamo player, I've used it in a few of my previous videos. Okay, all I've done is I've rotated, so I've taken off the animator so it doesn't, you know, change what I've done here. And I've manually gone in to the shoulders and the arms and I've just had a little mess around and I've rotated them. So if I go like here, okay, I've made it so that the hands look like this, so that they're out ready to, you know, fire a projectile from between their hands, just for a simple example, and then it fires it off in that direction. So I've added an empty game object. Okay, so you see here where this, this transform gizmo is. This is where the projectiles are going to spawn. And just make sure that the blue arrow is facing forwards. That's the way it's gonna get launched off. As for the code, make three scripts. We've got the cooldown system, the I has cooldown, which will be an interface, and then the test ability. Currently, they're all just empty mono behavior scripts because I'll be coding them along with you. Just make sure you've got them ready to be used. And you can go ahead and stick the two mono behaviors on your player, so the cooldown system and the test ability. So then once we've coded it, we don't have to remember to come back and add it later. So for the I has cooldown, as I said, we want to make this an interface. So we get rid of mono behavior, it's an interface. The reason we're using an interface for the I has cooldown is so that we can have different things in your game have cooldowns and still use the exact same system. So for example, you might have, you know, class specific abilities, you might have spells, you might have items that have cooldowns, all the different things that have cooldowns can use the I has cooldown interface. And then the only thing they have to have really is an ID. Okay, so in your game, things will have ID. Now this does have to be unique across all things that have cooldowns. So you don't want to have overlapping IDs between your spells and your uh, items and stuff. If you do have that, either don't, or you know, there's other ways around. You don't have to use an ID here necessarily. It's just the way I'm going to show you how to do it. And then everything that has a cooldown, of course, has an actual cooldown, which is a float. So we're gonna go with the cooldown duration, which is a getter. So our cooldown system can only receive these values, so they're just both getters. So now in the cooldown system, we're going to need a list, and that list is gonna store everything that is currently on cooldown. But the problem is if we just store a list of I has cooldown, then we don't actually have a way of tracking how much time is left on those cooldowns. We need to store more data. So for that, we're going to make another class, okay? So we're gonna make a class called, we'll just make it in here, why not? Public class, okay, cooldown data. And for this class, we'll actually give it a constructor to make our lives easier. So public cooldown data. And when we construct this class, we want to have passed in a I has cooldown, okay? And we'll just refer to that as a cooldown. And this class actually needs to store some data. So let's have a public int ID, which is a getter because we're gonna set it in the constructor here, but we're never going to change it ever again. So it can just stay as a getter. And then we also want the remaining time, okay? Remaining time. And this is gonna be a get private set, which just simply means uh, we can get it from anywhere, but we can only change it in the scope of this class. Then in the constructor, we can set the things. So the ID is the cooldown being passed in, dot ID and the remaining time is equal to the cooldown dot cooldown duration. And then finally for this class, we want to have a method to decrement the cooldown, taking in the delta time, which is the time since the last frame, and we're going to return a bool. We don't have to do this because we can obviously just check up in our system whether the remaining time is zero, but this helps us where we do the actual call to decrement cooldown, we just check the return value, we'll return true if it's hit zero, and if it's not hit zero, then we return false. So it's just an easy way of knowing whether this decrementing of the cooldown has resulted in it being finished. So we can say remaining time equals, and then the bigger value between the time minus the change in time or zero. This just stops it going negative. So it'll keep going down and down and down. If it hits zero or goes below zero, then it'll just stay at zero. It won't go negative. And then finally, we just wanna return whether the remaining time is equal to zero. That's it for our cooldown data. And now we're ready to store a list of it. So let's make a list of cooldown data. Call it cooldowns. Whoops, cooldowns. Okay. So we've got our list of cooldowns. That's where all our data will be stored. And then every frame, so in the update, we want to call a method we'll make called process cooldowns. Okay. Hit control dot enter. And then we get our method. 
Okay, here's where we're going to write the logic for processing our cooldowns. So we'll be using delta time in every iteration of the loop, so let's just cache it here. Okay, time not delta time, the time since last frame. And then we want to loop over all our cooldowns, but we want to loop backwards rather than forwards, because as we decrement the cooldowns, we want to remove any cooldowns that have been finished. The problem is, if you remove things from a list while you're going forwards through the list, everything afterwards shifts position and everything messes up and you get an out of range error and other problems can occur. So, if we go backwards and start at the end, then we remove things as we go backwards, it won't mess up the next things, because the next things are lower down in the list and those won't be moved. So we want to do a four, reverse, so two R's, double tab, okay, and then cooldowns dot count. And now what we can do is we can say, well, if cooldowns I dot, and then we're going to decrement the cooldown like that method we just wrote down here, okay, and we're going to pass in the delta time, and this is a bool, so we can make it an if, okay, so we're saying if this, so what that means is decrement it, and if it's now zero, meaning if it's now done, we want to remove it from our list, so remove at I, remove at that index. And that is the entire thing for just removing all the cooldowns for everything in our list. So it's nice and all that we've got the cooldown system basically working, but we don't have a way to, you know, check is something on cooldown, how long is left on the cooldown. You need to know both those things, you know, you need to know if it's ready to be used because then you can actually use the ability. You also might want to know how long is left so that you can display it in the UI on your hotbar or something. So we need those two methods to be able to do that. So to check if something is on cooldown, obviously it's a bool because it either is or it isn't. We take in the ID. And we just say, let's loop over each thing in the list. So cooldown data, cooldown in cooldowns. Okay. So we're going to loop over all the cooldowns and say, well, if the thing we're iterating over's ID matches the ID that we are checking for, then it means it is on cooldown. Okay. So we can return true. So we say return true. Okay. And then down here, we can say return false. So if we manage to go over everything in the list, and we don't find anything with a matching ID, it means it isn't on cooldown. But if we do find something, it means it is. And then to check how long is left on a particular cooldown, we want to return a float because that's the time left. So we're going to do another for each loop. So let's just copy this to be honest. Okay, so copy this for each loop. I want to say if the ID matches, then we actually want to, uh, sorry, if it doesn't match, in this case, continue, which just means go to the next iteration in the loop. So as soon as we find hours, as soon as we find the thing we're looking for, we want to return its remaining time, so remaining time. Otherwise, if we manage to loop over everything and we don't find it, it actually means that it's not on cooldown at all, so we can just return 0f. And of course, the final thing is to make a simple method to put something on cooldown. i has cooldown. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Cooldown. Okay, and all we're going to do is just add it to the list. Cooldowns.add. Want to add a new cooldown data. And remember, we made a constructor down here that takes in the cooldown and sets stuff for us. So we can just up here say cooldown. And there you go. So over in the test ability script, I've just put in some kind of boilerplate stuff here. All we need is some references. References to where to spawn in the projectile, the projectile itself, and reference to our cooldown system to be able to call the methods. And then um, here's where we set in the inspector the ID of the ability and the cooldown of the ability. And remember, we have to implement the I has cooldown interface, and that allows us to have this thing go on cooldown. And by implementing the interface, we need a getter for the ID and a getter for the cooldown. So we have our public int getter here, ID that returns this field ID here that we set in the inspector, and then the cooldown doing the same thing. So we have a getter for the cooldown duration that just returns whatever we set in the inspector using these serialized field privates. And just so we can do a simple test down here, we just want to say, well, if uh, keyboard dot current uh, the space key was pressed so return so saying if the keyboard's space key wasn't pressed return uh, if it was pressed then we want to make sure our things not on cooldown so if the cooldown system dot is on cooldown whoops is on cooldown we want to uh, check by ID so we use our ID in here okay return so we have to make sure we are pressing space and we are ready to be used. If so, then we want to say game object projectile instance. Let's spawn in a projectile. So we instantiate the projectile at our spawn point dot position. Whoops, with our spawn point dot rotation. And once we spawned it in, we want to add some force to a rigid body. So let's say projectile instance dot try get component rigid body. Okay, call it RB. 
So if it has a rigid body, then we'll say rb dot add, not add explosive force, just add force. Um, in what direction? Well, the forward. So projectile instance dot transform dot forward times a five will do. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, we'll change the velocity. And the final thing to do, let's just move back over, is once we've used our ability, is to put it on cooldown. So cooldown system dot put on cooldown this. Okay. Whoops. We can say this because this class is an I has cooldown. Over in Unity, on the player, we have our things here. You can drag in the cooldown system. The projectile prefab, I'll actually show you. I've already made it. It's just a simple sphere. Um, the transform, okay, let's drag that in. It's the, the point I made earlier, okay? And for the cooldown, let's just knock it down to two so we don't have to wait ages. And the ID, as long as it doesn't conflict with another ability, then obviously that's fine. So if we go down into the project, I've got a, a prefab here, a sphere collider with trigger, and a rigid body with no gravity. Okay, that's it. That's the projectile. So we'll just drag that in here. And we're ready to go. So let's uh, maximize and hit play. Okay, so we've given our uh, projectile a two second cooldown. Keep in mind, it'll just go through the wall and fly off into the distance. I haven't added any code to destroy it, but it's fine for this example. All we need to do is press space with our projectile. Wait two seconds. It's been about two seconds. We hit it again, it works. But if I try hitting it now, it doesn't work until two seconds. You can tell by my really loud and noxious keyboard. Okay, so as a two second cooldown, and even while playing, I can actually tweak that. So I can say as a 0.1 second cooldown, okay, and start spamming it. So I can do at least 10 a second. And obviously, I could say have a five second cooldown. Sorry for the jumping back and forth. So I can hit it once. One, two, three. I'll try doing it four seconds. It's too early. Five is about ready now. And it goes. Okay, obviously I counted very fast there. But the point is, it works. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks always for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Samran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.